This video has been made possible by BenQ. If you're a digital artist in need of a professional grade monitor, then check out BenQ.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video. So uh, today we're going to do a, a video that you guys asked me to do, and it's going to be about what hardware and software I use. Um, I don't know if it's typical for a 3D artist, uh, but it's what I use, and um, it's not necessarily about the choices I made, but more importantly, why I made them. Hopefully the information will help you to kind of understand my thought process, and maybe that will help you in yours, right? So I've got a whole long list here, and uh, let's get started. So first, uh, would you go with a desktop model or a laptop? Now. Uh, I think uh, a choice for a laptop is uh, obvious in the case that you have to be mobile, right? Let's say you have to go to a client's location to show what you've been working on, or you are working while you're traveling, let's say in a train or whatever, then it would be kind of an obvious choice. Now, I personally have both. I have a desktop system and a laptop. Um, laptops uh, became more affordable nowadays. But that said, if you want to get a laptop that's going to be a beast, if you know what I mean, uh, something that will fulfill all your needs, it can get very, very expensive, right? Now, the downside for a laptop for me is that it has limited space inside. So if you want to upgrade it, you typically would have to go and buy a new laptop. Um, you know, it overheats pretty fast. It's usually more expensive compared to what you get for it uh, to a desktop. And for that reason, I have both. But if you are on a budget and you have to choose and you have to be mobile, it would be an obvious choice. Now, I went for a desktop for a couple of reasons. First of all, my system is completely custom and I will talk about that in a bit, why, right? But a desktop system gives you a lot more space to upgrade. Let's say you want to build in additional hard drives. Let's say you want to switch out the motherboard, you want to install more RAM, uh, upgrade your CPU, all of that stuff, yeah? Technically, you can do that in a laptop as well, but like I said, super expensive, very fragile, and uh, you know, it's just not ideal. So that's why I have both, yeah? Now, I talked about, um, Custom, let's forget the laptop for a minute, right? So desktop, um, you're gonna buy a desktop uh, off the shelf. You're gonna buy it off the shelf and get some features or upgrades to it, or are you gonna go completely custom? Now I went completely custom uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, uh, I know someone who knows what he's doing, right? And I trust this person, so I know I will get good advice. Second is that by having a custom system, I can be prepared for the future. Uh, if you buy an off-the-shelf computer, yeah, you can upgrade that, but what you would do is at some point take out the hard drive, put in a new one, right? Or take out the RAM, put in new RAM and so forth. With a custom system, I'm thinking ahead. Okay, what do I need a year down the road, two years down the road and so forth? And the typical life cycle for a computer for me would be around, I would say four years, you know, including upgrades, four or five years max, right? Um, so when I pick out a custom system, <clears throat> I talk with my guy about what type of motherboard. Now I have an X99A SLI crate edition, right? Uh, I think the exact specification is MS7885. That's actually really more like a gaming motherboard, but it suited my needs uh, for a couple of reasons. It has four slots for RAM memory. Now, that means that if I start out with, let's say, two of these slots populated with RAM uh, SIMs, right, and I want to upgrade at some point, I can add two more. When you choose a motherboard, not only check out how many slots you have for RAM memory, but what the capacity is for each slot, right? So let's say each slot has a capacity of 32 gigs. Then your maximum is four times 32 over time. Be careful not to get a motherboard where the maximum is four per slot because then you're maxed out at 16, right? You get the idea. So that's important. Same thing when it comes to your CPU. What is the maximal, maximum upgrade you can do on a motherboard with a CPU? Let's say you start out on an Intel i5 and you want to go to an Intel i7. 
can the motherboard handle that? Okay, so that's all about the motherboard, about laptop versus desktop, and about you know the option to upgrade and so forth. Now, <clears throat> next up, my keyboard and my mouse. I chose for a wireless system, a, a Bluetooth system uh, for both the keyboard and the mouse, and I have a Logitech K800 wireless, uh, which is the keyboard, and a Logitech Performance MX wireless mouse, both wireless. Um, why? Well, first of all, because it's a stationary system on my desk and I have the Bluetooth close by, I always have a good signal, but more importantly, I don't have all these messy cables going on on my desk. Why is that important? Because I change the configuration of my desk depending on what I'm doing, right? I have a, a pen display, for example, for sculpting. And when I use the pen display, I will have my keyboard off of my desk and I will have my mouse off my desk as well. I don't want all these cables all over the place. I want to be able to switch fast, right? So that's why I chose for wireless. And if I want to, let's say, work on my TV or whatever, you know, it's easy because I can just switch over, yeah? So nothing too special about the keyboard and mouse. Uh, next up is the CPU or the processor, right? And for those of you who don't know that, CPU is Central Processing Unit, yeah? Basically the brain of your computer, if you will. All right, so what I have is a, an Intel uh, Core i7 6850K CPU, 3.6 gigahertz, uh, six core, 12 logic processors. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, right? <clears throat> okay, basically when you're looking at a CPU, like I said, it is the brain of your computer. It is the part that does the calculations and your RAM memory supports your CPU. Cache memory supports your CPU. And sometimes even your video card supports your CPU. Now, the more your CPU can handle, the less stress there are on the other components. That's kind of important, yeah? And that's a point I wanna make anyway when it comes to configuring a system. There's no point in having a killer CPU and a way too low amount of RAM memory, right? Or having a huge amount of RAM memory and a super slow CPU. It is the combination of all components that makes your system powerful, right? Keep in mind though that your CPU is more related to crunching the numbers, so calculating if you will, where the video card is working much more on you know, getting uh, whatever image you're creating on your display or displays. That's calculation as well, but in a different way, yeah? So that's the CPU I have. Um, what's important for a CPU is obviously uh, the clock speed. A lot of people, especially in gaming, want to overclock it. What that means basically is that you kind of uh, take off the reserve. You can go into the uh, BIOS or BIOS, right, in your system and uh, overclock the system so it pushes the CPU to go faster. Be careful with that because that can create heat issues and, and, and you know, have your system freeze up and whatnot. I would advise you to get a faster CPU um, instead of overclocking a slow one, if you can, yeah? Right, then the logical, uh, uh, the, the cores. The more cores, the better. The cores uh, uh, help to calculate much faster, and um, yeah, it's just, you know. So, in a nutshell, which CPU should you get? The best one you can afford while you don't sacrifice other components in your system, okay? Now, then the question, what brand? People will say, okay, should I get Intel or AMD or, or something else? <clears throat> Back in the day, it was Intel or AMD, and Intel was king, and AMD was no, not so much. Things have changed a lot over time. Uh, most CPUs are pretty solid nowadays. Do your homework, do your research, and again, make sure that whatever you choose is in balance with everything else, and keep an eye on the future as to upgrading, yeah? Okay, so then my GPU. Now I have to uh, say up front that my GPU is completely overkill, right? I have a Quadro, uh, an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. Super, super expensive. Now, do I need this card? To be 100% honest, no. 
is it helpful? Uh, does it make my uh, my life easier? Oh, for sure. And I mean, if you can afford one, hey, go for it. Uh, up until fairly recently, I was using a, a, a GTX 1080 T1, right? Or TI, T1, I don't know. Anyway, this is a killer card. Um, it's literally thousands of dollars. Uh, but what's important for a video card is that you kind of look at what type of work you're doing. Uh, first of all, I would advise to get an NVIDIA card for sure. I know you're not all going to agree with that, but that's my choice. Uh, NVIDIA card, um, then you got the choice between GeForce and Quadro. GeForce is more towards games. Quadro is more towards professional applications. Again, this is where your budget comes into play, right? Now, this card is 24 gigabytes. If you are typically working uh, in Maya or whatnot, I would say a bare minimum would be, I think, two gigabytes. If you wanna be sure, uh, check out the Autodesk website and you will have system specs, right? What do you need to run, you know, Maya 2020, 2022, etc. yeah? So that's the card I have. Uh, like I said, it's 24 gigs, All right? Then the uh, the RAM memory. I have uh, 64 gigs of RAM, uh, which is more than enough. Um, and um, like I said before, it's about the number of slots you have. Yeah. Um, based on the number of slots, I can upgrade. Uh, but what you want to consider here is, let's say you have four slots and you put 16 uh, gigs in each slot. When you upgrade, you have to get rid of those 16 gigs, right? And what are you going to do with them? You can't sell them because nobody's going to buy them, probably, right? So it's better to put two slots of 32 in and then upgrade at some point by adding 32 in the other two. You know what I mean? So you don't have to get rid of stuff. Okay, hard disk drives. Well, that's kind of a thing because I thought about this a long time and I came up with a system that works perfectly for me, right? First of all, my C drive or my main hard disk drive, my internal drive, it's a solid state drive. It's a two terabyte solid state drive. And um, I'll, I'll put the, the, the type up here. I forgot to write that down, yeah? The reason why it's solid state is because the only thing I put on that main hard disk drive is my operating system, which is Windows 10. Yeah, I'm a Windows guy, not an Apple guy. Windows 10 and uh, all my software. So, you know, Maya and ZBrush and that kind of thing. No files whatsoever. The reason being, I want my main drive to stay as fast as possible. That's why I chose for a solid state drive. That's why there's nothing else on there, okay? All right, then I have another internal drive, a D drive, which is kind of for overflow, that's one terabyte. Now, when it comes to my backup systems and my file management systems, I have a number of external drives. I have a three terabyte external drive, a one terabyte external drive, a two terabyte external drive, and a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. So what did I use these for? Well, let's see, the three terabyte external drive, that is for my file storage. So that's where I storage all my files, my uh, photography files, my uh, renders, my system files, everything, yeah? Now, the backup of these three terabyte is split up in two systems. I have a part going to the one terabyte drive, which is for all non-3D related stuff. So, you know, photos and whatnot. And then I have a two terabyte drive for everything that is related to, uh, to 3D, yeah? So that means I got one copy of everything on my main C solid state drive, and then I got a copy of all of my files on two different drives. So everything on the three terabyte external, and then a backup split in two other drives, part on the one terabyte and a part on the two terabyte, yeah? And the 120 gigabyte solid state drive, that is kind of like what I call my, uh, my carry uh, hard disk drive. Uh, let's say I need to show a client a file. The solid state drive is fast. 120 gigabytes is more than enough to take a couple of files with me. And uh, that way I don't have any performance loss. Okay. Right. Um, let's see what else. Uh, headphones. I got um, uh, Bluetooth headphones. I basically have them. Uh, I listen to music and whatever when I'm working. Uh, mine is a Sony wireless Bluetooth H900N. I think it was around 
250 bucks or so um, it's absolutely perfect it's noise cancelling and you can take it out and wear it when you're on a plane or whatever yeah so I'm really happy with that then um, I would almost say my pride and joy my monitors it's probably not a secret to you guys that I am a BenQ fan right and um, I'm also a BenQ ambassador now I don't use BenQ monitors because I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador because I use BenQ monitors. I've been using them for a long, long time. The reason why I chose for BenQ is because they have the quality uh, to do the job while they have a reasonable pricing. I don't believe in paying a max price just for, you know, so you can say, okay, I got this brand or that brand or whatever, right? BenQ does what it should do. It has solid performance. And like I said, it's reasonable pricing because when you get in the realm of professional monitors, the price is up there, right? And like I said before, you want to have the right balance so you can spend your budget on the things that matter. Now, I have uh, three BenQ monitors that I work with. I have a, a PD3 two two zero u right on the, the left here my one of my screens it's a 32 inch 4k monitor it's hdr 10 right and i use that for my 3d work obviously and the other one is pretty similar that's the benq pd 3200 u which is also a 32 inch 4k monitor i love these screens i have them synced up in a way that i can <clears throat> excuse me drag and drop around and whatever and it's just my go-to right now, I mentioned that I got three of them. My third BenQ monitor is an SW240. That is specifically for my photography work. Now, I talk about photography a lot. I think photography is important for 3D artists. Uh, anyway, it's important for me. And this one is a 24-inch 10-bit monitor. Uh, and again, it's awesome. Uh, I'm going to be upgrading soon to an SW270, and when I do, I will do a review video on it, and you can check it out, right? So, uh, other hardware. Well, basically, the only other thing I have is my pen display, and that's a Huon Canvas Pro 22-inch pen display. Now, for those of you who don't know the difference, uh, you got a tablet or a pen display. If you're a digital sculptor, um, you probably have one or the other. A tablet is something you move your pen on while you see your pen moving on your monitor. A pen display is something that has its own screen, so you just write on that, right? Now, the reason why I have Huon is because I tested several different brands over time, and I had a Wacom, and I had a Parblo, and I ended up using a Huon because, first of all, it is super quality it does everything it should and it's you know it's built like a house it's perfect but again the price right Wacom is used by a lot of people and they know it right and Wacom is expensive it's really expensive I mean I've seen Wacom pen displays you know looking at what 2800 bucks something like that this 22 inch Huon that I'm using right here and like I said in for me it competes in any way with a Wacom right it's a little over 800 bucks and it does a job so why spend 2,000 more on it right I've been using this for I don't know exactly but I think at least a year or so and uh, I have no complaints whatsoever okay uh, then finally on the hardware side I use a TrueBox console brand new thing it's a a kickstarter thing it's basically a customizable um cube i would say has a whole bunch of sliders and buttons that you can customize and it helps you to work so much faster in your 3d applications so you can have a button for alt shift you can have a button for control shift and so forth i did a video on that i'll uh, put a link below so you can check that out it's something i use when i'm working on my pen display okay all right, and then for my software, um, I would say my go-to is uh, Autodesk Maya, and you probably know that. Um, besides Maya, I use um, Substance Painter mostly and ZBrush mostly. These three, I would say, are my main, well, Keyshot, of course, four. So these four are my main applications. 
Now, in addition, I use a whole lot of other ones, right? I use uh, Modbox, I use Mari, I use 3D Code, I use Quixel, I use, I don't know, you name them, right? I think I counted them at some point, something like 20 or 25 or 26. Um, I really can't give you any advice on that. I mean, it's really personal, it's up to you. Um, I'm not gonna say one is better than the other. It's just a workflow you develop for yourself, right? Now, that's basically my setup, okay? So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I'll put a whole bunch of links below to whatever I can find the link for so you can see what's what, yeah? That said, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of video. If so, I will do more in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't subscribed just yet, please do. It would make my day. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. Yeah.